feeding into racial capitalism, specifically those in Western powers, right? Um, so using these moments to continue building together, right? Um, I can tell you for, as a Palestinian, um, who again, came about through growing up in a Palestinian activist household, growing up in Brooklyn, learning from my Caribbean siblings, right? That the legacy of resistance is on us too, right? We understand the Haitian uh, a movement, the Haitian resistance as part and parcel of our own freedom and liberation, right? That it goes hand in hand, right? And I just want to point out one thing and then I, um, I'll wrap up. Uh, when the earthquake in Haiti happened, uh, the Gaza, uh, the Palestinian prisoners and Israeli prisons actually, who were facing their own torture, their own um, uh, experiencing their own oppression, right, uh, actually fundraised and did work around the Haiti earthquake, right? Um, again, making, making those connections, right? Um, and I want us to, to, again, continue making those connections, understanding that what's happening in the Congo, understanding what's happening in Haiti and Palestine, right, um, in the Philippines, right, that these are all connected and these are all interlinked. And although our organizing in our different communities doesn't look the same, and it shouldn't, right, our people's material conditions, the way capitalism and oppression and racism impacts us, looks different for our communities. So our organizing isn't always the same, and that's okay, it shouldn't be. Right? We need to meet our people where they are, right? Um, but that when we understand that our enemy is one, right? That our struggle is one, right? Our organizing becomes more intentional, right? Our understanding of why our liberation is all interconnected is, is more intentional and understandable. So thank you all for your time. Again, I'm really honored to be here. Um, I do want to say uh, shout out to Eastside Arts Alliance. When I first moved to the West Coast, 